Right, well, good morning everybody. Once again, welcome back to Plot. Uh, busy day for the day. I've just finished off down here this morning, getting some of the last of my seeds sown. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned in the last video, I wanted to crack on and uh, get the last of the winter and spring sown. Yeah, flowers done. Now the, the calendula, the pop marigold, of uh, what I did, I sowed a few of them. Um, I've got the rest in the in the envelope. Uh, I've got my antarainum, I've got the calendula, or calendula, I've got a full tree of them. And of course I've got the hillbilly tomato. Now, I've done about four tomatoes already, and um, gradually one by one I'm getting them all cleaning up the seed. A uh, bit of yellow sulfur on them and pack them in the envelopes where I need them. But uh, the calendula, I like to get them sown now because what I like is a few early ones for next year. Um, I sowed some last year at the same time and they were lovely, nice, strong plants come the springtime. Now that's when I need them because I need them outside the, the polytunnels, I need them inside the polytunnels, and that's a perfect time to start getting them um, insects in, our flies, all the rest of it all the good pollinators, get them inside the polytunnels and if you've got early crops to go in and then it's a bonus for you. If you're planting early tomatoes then you need them pollinators early on, April, May time and of course if you've got your calendulas in, you've got your marigolds in, um, and it's it, it's fair game. They'll, they'll swoop in and of course they'll, they'll pollinate your plants at the same time. Now if you remember I did the, um, that was a couple of dozen marigolds that I saved and I've just saved the husks, what I'm going to do with that, I'm going to, I've got some marigolds left up the allotment, I'm going to bring them down, cut the heads, and I'm going to steep them all in a bit of warm water and see if I can get some sort of a juice off them, and try that tr as a spray. There's all sorts you can use, and uh, as I say, it's all free, and if, if it works, it works. And that's what I've getting off the, um, the marigolds, I've got like a quarter of a pint of seed, and uh, no, I'm not going to sit and count them, there must be absolutely thousands in there. Now them, they'll do four or five full-size trays for me next year. And you know how I like to plant my marigolds. Just in March time, broadcast them in a big tray and let them grow until they're a really good size and then pot them off into bunches. But we'll do all that next year. All they've had is a bit of yellow sulfur on them. I keep tossing them in the pot, get them nice and dry, and then they'll go in a, a nice big envelope today, tomorrow, and they're, they're upstairs for next year. Baby bush melons. Quite a few of them. Um, we've had a couple of melons, and uh, there's quite a few seed coming out of them, so I'm pleased with them. There's a couple of people asked for them, so I'll be sending them out in the new year. Uh, as I say, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go without the yellow sulfur. Now there was a comment on my Facebook page made us laugh the other day, because we're on about chemicals and uh, um, different um, methods of uh, spraying organically. And one of the guys come up with the suggestion of using uh, rotten eggs. Now rotten eggs to me is uh, the same as sulphur, it's the same smell. Um, whether that works or not I don't know, but um, I'm only just getting there. Uh, my kids used to eating sprouts now when they're 40 odd year old, so God knows what they'll think when, uh, when I tell them I'm going to be spraying them with rotten eggs. Um, that might be a bit of a put off, but hey, I'm all for it. I'm, uh, I'm willing to give anything a try and I'll certainly be trying that next year. What I will be try is um, uh, cayenne pepper or uh, chili peppers, put in water, steep in water. Now I'm going to do a garlic spray this weekend because this afternoon we want to get up the plot as well as get the jack onions in, get our garlic in, I want to put the first couple of rows of uh, spring cabbage in, this, the dunking. They're up like that now, they've the filled up pots so I'm well chuffed for that, so I want to get them planted out in the bottom polytunnel. So I'll need, what I will need is um, I've sent away for one, just a single electric hob uh, where I can place in here although I'll not be able to put it in here because I've got the camera on it's going to steam up so I'll have to do it in the garage but I'll show you what I'll be doing I'll be making uh, I'll be making a garlic spray up and I'll add some chilies. I've got some chilies up there I can cut up them long jaw chilies. I'll cut them up I'll add them and see what sort of a brew we'll get off now we can do it both ways with the garlic you can make a, a big batch uh, quite a big batch, you can make it two uh, a two pint batch, really uh, plenty of garlic in, mash it up and get it, get a really good strong mixture and you can put it in a watering can. Add your soap, just the same, and spray it on and sprinkle it along with a watering can or you can make a 
a stronger batch in a small spray like I do and just spray it on the cabbages and that'll do exactly the same thing. It's going to keep them bugs away, slugs, snails, anything that's, that's wanting to eat a young cabbage that'll be in there. So give it a good garlic spray first and that should protect them for a few months till they get, they get itself well rooted. A couple of tips on, the, on your roots. If you've got club root, I'll explain a little bit more when we get up the plot. That's another good tip. Um, we'll get the garlic in the first. The first garlic I'll go in. Uh, well, second lot of garlic is which I've grown every year. If I can find a pot, which um, as usual, I've, uh, I've been tidying up and I've got the um, I've got nearly all my pots put away. Um, so what I will be doing, it'll be somewhere in the region of that. Be a, a decent sized pot. What I like to do is put my garlics in, in a pot, four, five, six inch pot, and I'll make the mix up and do for the strawberries. I'll be doing that next week in the in the next video. And we'll put some garlic up in pots and they'll sit outside on the benches. Now what that'll do is they'll just stop outside all winter. They'll grow away again, nice big root system on them. A, a good sized bit of green grown before they get taken inside in the January, late January, February and then planted in the in the tunnels. And hopefully what that does, it has done for me for a couple of years, it's stopped them getting any rust. Rust being an airborne disease, if they're outside you're going to get it. Um, so what I like to do is to give them a good frosting outside first because if you don't give them that first initial frosting, it's the same as fruit. If you don't get that fruit set outside, good frosting, same as strawberries, you don't get the buds. It's exactly the same with garlic. If you don't get that good frosting, they'll not, they'll not divide. They're not in uh, segments. Um, you'll end up with just a, a big bulb. Um, I occasionally get a few bulbs if they, if they haven't been frosted enough. You get a few bulbs, but then again, chop them up and I can throw them into the mash and that's what I'll be doing with them ones up there. I've got three or four bulbs that we dug up last year. So I'll just chop them up and they'll go into me mix this weekend. But I'll show you how to do that um, maybe Saturday or Sunday once my uh, me new cooker arrives. Just a little hot plate. Fifteen quid bargain. It saves all the grief of the missus. Um, upstairs in a flat I did it uh, last year and uh, oh, I got bollocking for about a week after that. The smell just went right through the flat, you know, and everywhere was just make, just stinking with it. it smelled like a rare uh, like kebab shop for a week, and uh, I'm never one for kebabs, but uh, there you go, hey ho, you learn your lessons. But uh, as I say, I've been busy planting the seeds up. Now, as well as um, calendula, uh, this is one of my old time favourites, by the way. This is the oxide daisy, and it's as easy as anything to grow. And all I've did is I broadcast them, and it's just a small tree. There's probably a couple of hundred seed in there. Tip your seed out into your hand first and then just broadcast them and then just cover with a light um, a dust in. Once again, um, Michelle at least I think it was asking the other night what's the difference between perlite and vermiculite. Well, perlite, it gives you a drainage. Vermiculite holds your water. That's the difference. Sometimes I use vermiculite in my mixes. If, I wanna, if I've got it too sandy, I put a bit of vermiculite in it and I just hold that moisture a bit, bit longer. Um, a lot of people use it in their mixes, um, but for me, for seed tone, I like to use perlite. And what I did once I've made me mix up, I put a handful of me pot mix to one side and add a handful of perlite and then that just gets sprinkled with a very fine sieve over the top of them. And that's them. Um, but uh, yeah, oxide daisy, get them in. Absolutely fantastic for bringing the hoverflies down. And a couple of them outside your polytunnels even put a couple inside if you want. They are perennial, so once you get them going, um, I've got a few outside in the garden actually growing away there. Uh, they, they do grow pretty tall, they're on about the three foot mark. So if you want to put a couple around the greenhouse in pots, you can grow them, and uh, they're fine. And they bring all the all the good bugs down. The hover flies especially, there'll be thousands of them. Now the better daisy, I showed you it last time, I'll, I'll be meaning to try and get these potted up this week, so I maybe. In the next video, I'll start putting them up, get them in the in the boxes. Now I showed you a sort of tip last year, if you remember. If you've got some old um, markers, that's well past the sell by date, and they've got marks on both sides. Rather than clean them up, um, just put a hole in the bag in the bottom of your pocket, and there you have first class marker. And of course, if your eyes are a bit short sighted like me, you know, you don't have to put your glasses on to see what they are. But it's perennial. Now, they'll definitely be potted off. Now, I've got my delphiniums in. 
they were potted in, the calendula. Another tree of uh, winter pansies, they're in, but uh, they'll be coming through within a week's time. I mean, even through the day in here, it's lovely and warm down home. I've got no heat on whatsoever, and it's 60 degrees. It's a, it's a very cold day of a focus for heavy rains tonight. Um, heavy wind and heavy rain, so as I say, I must get up and get cracking on the um, on what I promised to do, is that the jack onions and the garlic. Forget me nuts, it's another good one. They're in. So as I say, they'll just be sitting in here in the greenhouse. What I like to do is I come down in the morning, first thing, and whack the door open. Never have this door shut. If an evening when I go, I'll leave it a couple inches adrift, and that just lets all the fresh air through. I've often said this, don't let your greenhouse go stagnant, especially this time of the year. You want good air flow, good clean compost, good fresh water. It's a must that. Never use it out of your barrels. If you've got dirty water in your barrels, you're going to be spreading it all over your, your plants and your, 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 your new seedlings. So don't use dirty water. Fresh water every time. Bring it up the temperature in your greenhouse, keep it at the same temperature, and you shouldn't have any problem. These will gallop through these seeds, I guarantee. Uh, within the next couple of weeks, and we'll start printing them off, put them in a small pot, and what I've done up the up the allotment in the first tunnel, I've sort of put my benching back in. So my shelving's starting to go back in now, and um, by 10 these are ready, and I pricked off, they'll go up on that shelving, and they'll just overwinter, all winter, in that bottom pulley tunnel. And by spring time, they'll be a nice, solid plant, ready for planting out. So that's a plan the day. As I say, there's a few spots on the windows there, bit of rain, I just hope it's not going to come down too early. I want to get up there, get the garlic in, get the jack onions in, and uh, hopefully, if it does start to rain, we can escape into the bottom polytunnel, and I'll show you how I'm getting on with the um, with the spring cabbage. Them don't are looking absolutely fantastic. As I say, all I need to do now is to make a, uh, a garlic spray up, and I'll be over the moon. Get them a good soak with that, and they're well away. So as I say, I've been seed sowing all week, seed saving all week, <coughs> And um, getting a few little odds and sods tied up around the plot. Um, we're still busy on wash sheds, so I'll, I'll show you how we're getting over them soon once I get the second part built. And then it'll be all inside work after the next one. Day. You see, we're in the beginning of October now, the nights are starting to cut in, so maybe it's three or four weeks' time I'll not be going up there every evening. It'll be too dark. I've not got a Jenny up there. Um, it's a bit dangerous working on the plot of an evening, so. I'll maybe put the light on here. I'll not be growing any show, um, show leeks or show onions this year. There's nothing going in here. So my lights are not going until January. Whereas last year I, had, I grew a lot of show leeks and show onions for a couple of the lads up the allotments. But I'll not be growing them this year. Uh, there'll be no heat whatsoever going on in here until January. And that's when me, me sister's away to Spain next, day, um, next week. Uh, the week after I think. So they're going to bring us me, me Spanish onions back. Hopefully. Um, so they'll be the first things to go in in January so I'm over the moon with that um, I've got the daily as a lift I can get that done next week that's definitely I've got the strawberries there the strawberries to put up um, I've got the garlic to go in so I've got loads to do next week so it's going to be a, a full video so for the time being take a say we'll, uh, we'll crack on we'll get ourselves up the plot and we'll get started on that garlic and then, as I say, in a week's time, I'll do how I, do, how I grow the garlic for inside the polytunnels. And so if you want to try growing them inside, it's up to you. Um, I'll just get the, I'll get some good crops from inside, and i get some some quite good crops from the outside. just depends. If you haven't got any room in your polytunnel, well, you know the size of ours. If you haven't got the room, then don't bother. But if you've got the room, then try it. Try if you will. It, uh, they've always worked plenty for us, but... Uh, for the time being, I'm going to crack on, get myself away up there, and hopefully I'll get this video online tonight. As loads of new subscribers come on, over the moon, the last couple of weeks, I think we've picked up about uh, 60 or 70 subscribers in the, in the last fortnight alone, so I'm over the moon. I'm glad you're getting something from the channel. Um, as I say, we'll like to try and get a video out as much as we can. I'll start slowing down in a couple of weeks' time once we get the, um, once we get into November. We'll probably just do one a fortnight, maybe it's one. One every three weeks, as the uh, as the work picks up, we've always, always got loads to do. If we're not turning beds over, mucking things, what I have done, I've sent away for another soil test kit. They should be arriving this week, so I will incorporate a little bit of knowledge in, in next week's video 
if I take a good soil sample. Um, I know I've got my probe, I rely on the probe um, quite a bit. Just stick it in and get a good reading and it gives us a, quite a good idea of where my soil's lying. If, if, whether it's high or whether it's low acidity, I can bring it up or bring it down, whichever. Lime it. I've done that and I've got a smashing reading on my um, onion bed that I'm going to plant up this afternoon. That's nearly up to six, so I'm spot on with that. I'm over the moon. Seven's even better if you can get it up to seven. That's ideal. That's the level where you want to be at. But I'm quite happy at six with Japanese onions. They're overwintering. The rain's going to be washing hammering them all winter long. It's going to be leaching out whatever's in the in the trench here. So the onions will be quite happy sitting in that. But for the time being, let's get up there, get in the pot, and uh, we'll get started with these garlics. Okay, so I'll see you up there soon. Right, well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I've getting managed to get up the plot from home, getting finished off them seedlings down home. Bits and pieces, like you see, I like to uh, always start the video off from down home and uh, get a little bit done down there before I venture up the plot. Oh, it's not a bad afternoon, the sun's trying to break through there, but the um, main job this afternoon is to try and get these Jap onions in and get the garlic in, or the first. Lot of garlic, but I'll explain um, in detail a bit later on about the garlic. Um, I like to put a, a row outside. I normally have I've split the bed up into three because I'm going to have three full rows of Japanese onions. And what I normally do on either side of the Jap onions, I put a row of parsnips in in January, February. But there, I'm going to put a row of garlic outside this year, and the remainder of the garlic I'm going to plant but inside the tunnel. Now I do grow garlic inside, it's um, it's quite an easy job to do, but um, I'll show you all that in a minute. I'll show you how I get on with me um, with me soft neck. And uh, as I say, I like the, I've got my trusty little troll here, and the spade part of it is three inches deep. I've made two and a half, three inches is spot on. I like to make a nice deep furrow with the troll, and then all I do is I go along with the garlic, it's been nicely cleaned up uh, from the ones I saved from last year. And all I do, for my measurement, is a fist. Just put the first garlic in, and I press it down. So, in honesty, it's going about three inches down at the soil. A good three inches. These are the small garlic, so three inches is fine for me. As I say, first put a fist in, and then move your next garlic along. Plant it in once again. Fist in. Plant it in. Making sure you plant your garlic the right way up. As you can see on the on the base of it and the tip of it, the base where the old root plate is, and that's your that's your bottom. So if you squeeze them in and you can quite easily work your way along. You just see the tops of the garlic peeping through the, the bottom of the um, the bottom of the furrow there. And it's uh, it's quite an easy job to do. Now the soil is beautiful. We've had quite a bit of rain over the last few nights, um, and of course I lined it the other night, I've got a good reading. Um, it's up to six now, so I'm well pleased with that, and that's fine for me for the garlics and onions. As I see, I can just plod on now, popping them in, just work my way along, nice and slow. No hurry in it for this job. As I see, if I get this done today, I'll be over the moon, because what's going to happen tonight we're going to hit the, the end of that hurricane Dorian we're going to hit with over the northeast in Scotland and so I'm hoping these garlics will be well covered up and what all they'll do is they'll get a good bit of rain on them I say just uh, take my time pressing them in I'll spread a few out if you find you've got too many in just pull them away I say it's quite an easy job to do the bigger garlics, I know Carol Madison commented on the, uh, the good garlic crop you had last year. Well, great stuff, Carol. We um, we had a quite a good crop, and I've saved some of me elephant garlics. And I'm gonna, of course, I'm gonna grow them inside this year, like I did last year. But the first class crop of them, and these are the little Isle of White ones. Uh, Solent white, I think these are called. 
nice little garlic. And we just got to remember not to put them too deep. Because what a lot of people don't realise. I'll show you when I come back down the uh, when I hear back down the bed. At the moment I've just got it marked out with a bit of fair uh, blue twine. So this will come out. And of course I've got my first string there for my chap onions. So I know exactly where they're going. I've got the flat the bed split up in the three. I'll get three first cast rows I've got in fair chap onions. And I get a roll of garlic. And plus I've got space over on that back end there for a roll portion of next year. See I just like to uh, work my way along. And I think it's the best measurement. Uh, do we see on the chap onions? Just a fist. That's all. Gives them quite enough room to grow. If it grows as good as old, you'll find that they'll just touch each other as they grow through. So you waste nothing in the bed. No space wasted. The onions are just there. Grow up side by side. They'll be fine. Nearly there. That'll give out before I do. Unfortunately, it's one of them job, jobs you can't. Um, there's no easy way of doing it. So I'm short sure too. That was quite a good guess, that. I scattered them along and I find I'm just too short. So, there are two. Two nice groves. Pop that in. I'm all going to move that, that's the first row done. And of course, all I need to do now is to turn me all the way and go back along the trench and backfill it. You can use a rake for this if you want. Quite an easy job to do. And now, of course, the garlics are in a good three inches down. Don't give it a nut. Because what's going to happen, I'll finish that row off, get it tidied up, any lumps you can just break up, really lovely soil, really loamy, and of course our soil gets smoked every year, or nearly every year, gets rotated every year, so different crops, different manures, and uh, it keeps it in really good health, and that's what it plays with. So there's our garlics here, I'll go, I'll put some of these inside so what I'm going to do with these I'm going to plant them in a four inch pot like I did last year four or six inch pot and I'll use the same pot and mix as what I do with my strawberries when I do the, the next video coming up we'll be potting on the strawberries and of course I'll be planting meat garlics for the inside the tunnel for next year now what you do want to do is to plant your garlics too deep so they don't get enough frosting when I'm going to plant the garlics for inside, I'll, plant, I'll put them up first in the pots and they'll stop out in the benches outside here in all the cold weather until they get a good freezing. If they don't get a good freezing, what will happen? You'll end up with a bulb like that. It'll not split, it'll not divide. So you end up with just a, a round clove of garlic like that. Sometimes it happens. Uh, I mean, as I say, even myself, I get them like that. Um, I'll get two or three, won't divide, and you'll find that's because they don't get a really cold enough spell. So if you're going to grow garlic like me and you're going to take it inside and plant it later on, well the way to do it first is to pot it up into a small pot, like you say, six inch pot's fine, uh, make a good quality compost up, um, you know my compost, I make up for the strawberries, the um, multi-purpose, my own mix, uh, compost up the compost bin, sieved, good chopped sand, and a handful of uh, bone meal. I'll show you how to make that mix next week. I'll be putting the mixer on. And I'll make that mix up. And uh, all the garlics I'm going to grow inside the tunnel, they'll be planted up in the pots and they'll be left outside on the benches. Snow, rain, whatever. And they'll not be taken inside until at least February. But by then, they'll have a good root system on them. They'll be a good bit top growth on them. And then we we'll plant them out in the polytunnel. But the beauty of it is, they've had their frosting. They've been really cold. 
so really the roots, the bulbs should start to divide and uh, that's the secret of getting good garlics. Now there's my elephant garlics. Now the elephant garlics are going to be going inside the tunnel. So what I'll do, I'll plant them up in a big pot next week. Lovely big um, segment seven, massive. I've got a good 12 of them, that's fine for us. We only need to keep two, put 12 in, keep two back for seed each year. And that's fine. But uh, we've got an assortment of planting out to be done today, so I'm going to put them to one side. Just for now, and I'm going to put them to one side, just for now. And of course I've got my board over there, and the next job to do, of course, your favourites, the Jap onions. Now these I grow every year, and I get a first class crop from them every year. And it's quite an easy job to do. Um, Michelle Lee's commented the other night about she, th she thought she might have planted hers a bit too deep. Well, no problem Michelle. All you have to do next year is when they start growing, uh, Roger does it every year. Once they're, once they're well in the way into March time, in April, we'll, we'll go around the bulb with a fork, break up the soil, and just pull away the soil from the bulb. And that way it'll let your bulb expand out and you get a nice first class onion. When you see a lot of the big growers, the big onion growers, they grow theirs on the top. Uh, and that's, that's what we'll be doing here. We'll just be pulling the soil away. So the onions are sitting on top of the soil and they'll swell out and you get a first class onion. Uh, as I say, I grow the same ones every year. That's my red electric. Now the red electric are going in, in them three barrels over there. You send you yellow and they're fantastic here. Sets up uh, nice big ones. I get them from Kings every year. And of course, what I have got for inside the tunnel, I've got the snowball again. I'm going to put a row of snowball in with the cabbages, the spring cabbage. So I'll do that in the later in the video. But for the, for the time being, I want to get started on these um, Centu Yellow. So I've, get, I've got my first line out here. And once again, do it exactly the same thing. Just spread a few, spread a few onions along. Doesn't matter what size they are. I tend to, what I've done in later years is pick all the big ones out. Watch there. I find just there. Uh, just work your way through them and you'll get a, a first class crop. Now with these they're exactly the same. Top and tail, your tail is where the little root plate is and they do exactly the same as what I've done with the garlic. Just push the first one in and I just push it in so the tip is clear of the soil. Fist, fist, and it's such an easy job just push them into the soil. They're not going to go anywhere. Nice straight line. If you've got problems with pigeons, you'll find sometimes that the pigeons will pick away the straw on the top of them and they could start pulling them out. Now with these, these will grow and the size of the onion, these onions will be touching each other next year uh, when they grow out, when they expand. And it's just an easy job to go around with a fork when you're weeding and pull the soil away from the, from the bulbs so the man just swell well out. Once again, just work your way along. Now this bed's already been turned over, it's been booked, been lined, so it's nice and soft. As I say, we've got some first class soils in here. Um, we'll make sure we muck and feed and fertilise every year. Such an easy job to do. A lot of lads commenting on the, on the Facebook page about wanting to try the job on here as well. This is the way to do it. Of course, the bonus is it's going to pour down the night, so they're going to get a good watering, which is uh, which is setting away. Now a lot of people have been starting them off in trees, so that's that's fine. If you can do that, if you want to if you want to get a, a head start, but I find having too much green on top sometimes it can damage in the winter, so you've lost. All that early start that is when starting off in the greenhouse, and uh, you're going to have to rely on new growth again next year. So I tend to wait until later on. October time's fine for me. The leaves will kick in straight away with a bit of rain. What happened? 
the roots on stop, pushing it way down, making the root, making the root system. So there'll not be much on the top for the time being. But, uh, but I'm quite happy with that. What I want to do is to get that root system built up first. And once, uh, once I know the root system's away, the winter's in, you're going to get very little top growth. Come the springtime, oh, your root system's already there, so as soon as the weather starts warming up, the way they'll shoot. All they need then is just make sure you keep them well weeded out, and I'll let you give them a, a handful of uh, either bone meal or um, nitro chalk in early spring, and that's all they'll get. And uh, they'll rock away. And, uh, I guarantee you, planting this way, you'll get a first pass crop of them. Nearly there. Now I know my spacing, so I can just, I can just pop my name without having to use my fist. But there. Uh, as I say, for you, that's just starting off. Get yourself a nice straight line. Put a few more to go in yet. Finish this row. There we are. And that's first row done. So easy. Just push them in, just so that the top's just sticking above the side level. It's all you want. And of course, just keep a check on them because sometimes what'll happen if the pigeons do if the pigeons do peck at them, it's easy enough to have a, a walk board in between your, your rows. Go along and just push them back in. Sometimes when they start rooting, they might start and push itself up over the soil. That's, that's fine. Just go back along. Keep a check them. Once a week, if you see any that's popped out, get a hold of them and push them back into the same hole. And they'll grow away fine. And of course, that's my first two rows of chop onions in. Now I've got one there, two, three rows to go in. Excuse me, three rows to go in. So I'm going to crack on these. I'll get this first row of garlic covered in. And then I'll get the, I'll get the last uh, rows of Japanese onions in, and we'll get us selling the polytunnel, and we'll get um, we'll get a look at some of these spring cabbages. But uh, yeah, that's the um, that's a snowball. They're going to go inside with the, uh, the spring cabbage, and of course the spring cabbage is absolutely spot on. So we're going to fix the weedy hoses up because we we'll stripped everything down last week when we we'll clear the beds. So we're going to connect the weedy hoses back up, get them all lined in their rows. And then we start planting the cabbages out. And of course, what? Well, well, a couple of rows of uh, snowball onions. And they should grow with canny in the tunnel, but just make sure you, uh, you keep an eye on the water, and that's the only thing. But there. Uh, yeah, hopefully I can get this, uh, get this shirt off. I'm starting to get a bit warm here. No doubt it's going to be a lot warmer in the polytunnel. So we'll, uh, we'll see you again soon, okay? Right, well, I managed to get myself inside here. It's uh, as I says before, it's a tad warmer in here, um, not too bad. I've already made a start, I've, um, as I had mentioned before, we've got, the, uh, we've got it all cleaned out last week. Uh, we've still got a few sweet corn at the far end of the tunnel there, but I'm not bothered about that. I've got the grey paint to clean off, but uh, as usual I don't touch that until uh, the solstice. And it's nice and dry and then I can get all the side shoots cut off and take a few cuttings for next year. But uh, for the time being, it's, um, it's all been limed, the bed's all been limed, it's been tested, and of course, for cabbages, if you can get a, if, uh, if you can get a count up between five and six, up to six and a half, that's fine. That just oh, does me. I've already started off planting some of these, and I've got a, I've got a half dozen still left to, to pot off, but uh, I love this time of year, getting the, getting the beds ready again for, uh, for the new season. As I say, I've got I've gotten the Japanese onions in. I've still got a row to put in here, but what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll leave this this spacing down the side here. Um, once I get the, where I've got the um, where I've got the three runs of uh, whippy hose, and down this end here on the uh, on the far corner there, I'll get a row of Japanese onions down the front there. Don't need much room. Uh, as I say, as long as just keep them keep an eye on the water and uh, they'll be fine. So I'm gonna. Put the last of these cabbages in, and of course these are the cabbage Duncan. If you remember, I sowed them at the uh, in the middle of last month, just there, uh, nice and slow, out in the cold on on the benches, no uh, no heat whatsoever. And of course now I've got a first class cabbage for uh, for planting out. There's not a mark on them; they're beautiful. But uh, you know me, I like the uh, 
I like to make it deadly sure. So what I'm going to do this weekend is to make up a colic spray. Um, I've sent away for a little single hot plate, a little electric one. Of course, I can, I can set it away up here in the Jenny, or I can do it down home in the, in the garage, sit in the garage, and I can, I can boil away. Uh, I know you get there, uh, you can get some uh, bother from the missus when you start boiling the uh, garlic stone, as uh, Walter Ricky will uh, will remember. I got a right bulk on last year for doing it, and I, I think I stunk the flat out for about three days. So I'm uh, lesson learned. I'm, uh, I'm doing only boiling, only sprays down in the garage now. It's uh, it's a lot easier that way, and you get a lot less grief from the missus. So as I say, these are the cabbage dunking. They're a little point, pointy uh, cabbage. Absolutely great for closer spacing. If you, if you think by looking at them, they're, they're, they're a bit close, but they're not. Uh, a foot apart's fine for these, and they, they grow nice. They grow nice, tight heart in them. And uh, three rows in here, 20 in a row, that's a good 60 cabbages. And that fills this bed up. But not only am I getting a first class cabbage over here, it's cleaning the bed for us. It's going to lift all them excess salts, all them excess chemicals that's in there. Anything that's lying in there, it's going to take them all out, and it's going to leave the soil nice and neutral for, for us to start them. Um, getting ready for tomatoes then coming in next year and of course we can, we can go either way, we can manure it or we can lime it to, to get round about the 7 mark um, which is fantastic for tomatoes between 6 and 7 but yeah, yeah, it's um, it's all going good so let's crack on with these uh, spring cabbage and get these finished up as I say, it's, uh, it's been a Quite a busy, um, quite a busy couple of weeks. So I've managed to do. I've managed to start putting some staging up. We like to put shelves right through the polytunnel, and of course we've got a little, little winter bedding coming in. Um, a lot of seeds that I've sown, especially the ones I've sown down home, they'll be coming up in about a week's time, uh, and they'll set these shelves in there, nice and cold. Um, and once they start breaking cover, I'll give them another good, good dosing of um, chamomile tea. Bring them up here, and then we'll, we'll prick them off into their pots, and they'll just sit in the winter, all of the winter in here, and then uh, you get a first first class plant for planting out in the spring time. But uh, yeah, as I say, these are my, uh, the spring cabbage dunking, absolutely fantastic plant. Now I always like to pot up my spring cabbage into single pots, reason being, when you tip these out, you've got a first class root system on each plant, an individual plant. If you get problems with their uh, club roots, this is the best way to grow them. Because by growing your plant singly like that, it's got a first class root system. And when you put that in the soil, it, if the, uh, the club root does attack it, it's going to be the outer roots and it's going to give the plant a chance to get um, to get itself into the soil and get a good root system grown before it will affect it. Um, so you will still get a cabbage over it, although you'll get an old root system with the with the club root, but you'll still, you should still get a crop of them. There's lots of varieties out there, um, club root resistant, but um, I like to stick my basic ones, uh, the ones I use every year, and uh, of course, if I do have any problems, I can always rely on the old rhubarb leaf. Now this is a this is a real old cure. This what I like to do is to, to get a rhubarb leaf. And welt it down, so it's been welted down in the greenhouse for a day or two, so it's nice and soft. And then all you have to do, snap away the main pots. Easy as that. Just fold it up, wrap your plant, wrap the, the whole base of your plant in a rhubarb leaf. Of course, nice and deep, of course, the soil is beautiful. It's 18, two foot, 18 inches to 2 foot deep, this. Don't forget. I like to really force mine in, and that's another good point about having your plants in single pots. Is when you plant it outside in the garden, it's got a much better chance of not being disturbed by the wind, rain, bad weather. It's got a good root system, it's well anchored into the ground, and it shouldn't suffer any wind damage. The worst thing you can have is putting small plants out into the garden and having them blown around, rocking away. And of course that doesn't no good whatsoever and you'll end up with a poor plant. Growing them on singly like this, first class. Get that wicky hose out of the way. As I say, I like to put the, the cabbages 
just down the side of the your hose. So I can turn the your hose on now. And we'll get all these there. Uh, we'll get 60 plants watered all at the same time. It's a little space saving and it's a, it's a little time saving. Especially when we're busy putting off and that. Just turn the hose on and it'll do all the watering for her. And that's, that's the whole idea. But yeah, these beds are perfect. Really nice and deep, well mucked, and there we are as well. Our first row of dunking in. I've got two rows to do. Or I can leave Roger to crack on with them tomorrow morning. And of course, get the pots and the cups tidied up in the trays and get them put up at height on the benches. I've got some more big seed trays to bring in here and get them put up at height. And of course, I'm all ready for bringing me seedlings up from down home. That's it. So I hope I've been a bit happy as all. Well. I know there's a lot of people looking forward to getting the uh, getting the Jap onions in today or this week. Uh, the garlic. Now what I'll do next week for the next day, the next video, we'll get still in the next point tunnel. I'll put the mixer on and uh, we'll get a big mix made up and we'll start putting on the strawberries. I've got the strawberries to do and then I'll make a mix up the same time for the year uh, for the garlics. Put the, put the garlics in pots, the ones that we're going to bring inside next year. I mean, there's a good 14 inches there between the, the cabbage and the side of the bench. And I can put a row of garlic down there quite easily next year. Um, bring, them, bring the pots in in about the uh, end of January, February, when there's a good root system on them, and plant them into there. And the idea being they've been frosted, they've had some really low temperatures, and so that should help, help it them. Um, break away into the segments. If it hasn't been cold enough, you'll end up with just a bulb like I explained at the beginning of the video. But um, it's worthwhile trying it because you get, you get an early garlic and one thing that I can't say is that usually they're rust free. Uh, when they're outside in, in the garden, just open to the elements um, and if you've got rust, if it's blown around, you're going to get it. But inside, at least you've got it, you can give it a little bit of protection. Now the only thing these are going to get now is when I finish them off is a good soaking with um, with garlic spray. Put a bit of soapy water in with it, give them a good soak with that, and uh, that should keep them good. I'll keep any bugs, any slugs, snails that's crawling around, that'll give them a bit of a shock and it'll, it'll keep them off the cabbages. That's all they'll need, and uh, hopefully they'll we'll get, we'll look for a first class crop of cabbage in the springtime. I know that's a long way off. Um, but uh, this is the first step. But don't forget the old rhubarb leaf. If you've got club root, I feel sorry for you. But um, growing in my way, and growing your beds the same as what we do, keep rotating, rotating. You shouldn't get any build up of pests, you shouldn't get any build up of diseases. Um, but once you have got club root, I'm afraid you've got it for a long time because it's, uh, it's one of them diseases that just linger on and linger on for years. But there uh, is ways around it, so you can use a rhubarb leaf, you can, get, um, you can get varieties that are uh, supposedly resistant, but I would still go down the lines of putting a bit of rhubarb leaf around it, and uh, that just gives, gives that extra protection. But certainly, pricking the seeds off into pots, I've done it for years now, I know it's a bit extra work, but uh, that's the results you get. They are first class cabbages now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get a drop of water out on the rain barrels, Give them a good drink, and then that's me for the night. I'll get myself way down home, and uh, hope we get this video online. So I hope I've, uh, I hope I've given you a few tips on the on the onions and the garlics and the cabbages. That's what it's all about. It's sharing. Um, got loads of new subscribers been coming on over the last uh, week or two. So welcome everybody. Welcome to the plot. And uh, this is one of the, one of our uh, polytunnels. This is the, the lower one. Um, as I say, we'll be cropping the cabbages this year, and then next year we'll be getting the soil ready for the tomatoes. So, you know, we'll always take, try and think ahead. Planning, planning, planning is everything. And uh, that's where we garden, and uh, first class results every day. We're always happy with what we'll get. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to, judging by that sky, I think they're, uh, that storm's just about ready to help with. So that's why I like to come inside of an afternoon. It's um, 10 to 4 now in the afternoon up northeast here. 
and uh, see the clouds just starting to build up over so I think the rain's going to hit around about the 6 o'clock mark. So I'll water these inside, of course the, the outside the, the weather's not going to affect these any, um, but the garlics and the onions are going to get a good drink of water tonight and it's going to kick them into growth. And uh, I'll keep you updated on them as the, as the year prolongs, as the year goes on and uh, see what sort of a crop we'll get from it next year. Just a few little tips when you when you are doing them, like so pulling your soil away from the bulbs next year, give them a little spring feed, make sure you water them through the winter, because you, you can get some very dry spells in the winter. If you get a wind blowing and you've got a dry spell and you know your, your onions tend to get dry, there's nothing wrong with going along with the hose or the watering can and just putting a drop of water along the rows. It takes five minutes, that's all, especially with the red onions. I put the red onions in the three trees that I've got outside the tunnel so I can water them. Always make sure that red ones are well watered because if they're not, they'll bolt. A lot of people have trouble growing red onions, but there uh, we get a first cast crop nearly every year. We never complain about them. But I've just put my order in. Um, this afternoon I've been down home and my sisters are going away to Spain next week uh, for a little break. So I've put my order in for me, my Spanish onions. And of course we'll be sowing them in January. Had some fantastic crops uh, off them this year, so I'm going to. I'm going to get the same seed again from uh, from Benny Dome, and uh, no doubt they'll pick us up some chilies, peppers, and some more tomato seed when they're over there. But that's all for the uh, that's all for the next day, uh, the next program. As I say, I've finished off getting all my seeds um, collected now. Uh, I've done most of the sowing that I need to do, and then this is the main job now: is getting these planted out, getting this tunnel finished off, getting the outside bed done, and then we can. We can concentrate on cleaning up ready for the winter. <coughs> but yeah, over the moon, really pleased with what I've getting achieved this afternoon. So I hope being some help is, as I say, keep on sharing, keep on subscribing, and uh, keep on watching the plot. And we'll love it. So I'll see you all again next week. As I say, I'll get that mixer going, and we'll, we'll make a couple of mixes up for the strawberries, and we'll get our garlics planted in pots. Okay. So I'll uh, hopefully see you in a week's time. Bye for now.